What's that small guilt that haunts you? Part 3. Chill out and dive into the story. If you enjoy our vibe, don't forget to subscribe and share Thread Tonic with your friends. Account 1. Almost a decade ago, I moved in with my, at the time, fiancé and his three-year-old daughter. It was shortly before Christmas, and I wanted to clean up a little bit in the den so we could get the decorations out. I grabbed the nearest trash bag and started filling it with my fiancé's trash. The next day, while his daughter was at preschool, my fiancé comes to me and asks me where the presents are. Confused, I tell him the only thing I had done the day before was clean. Heart sinking, he goes running out to the road and rescues the bag he had put all her presents in moments before the trash men went to take it away. Thankfully, I hadn't put anything too disgusting in it, and we managed to clean off the toys and wrap them. Three days later was Christmas, and my fiancé and I had gotten over our little fit about whose fault it was, and we were enjoying his daughter opening presents. That is, until she stopped and looked up at her father and said, Daddy... Why did Santa bring me an old French fry? I burst into laughter and said it must have fallen in there while he was eating dinner while delivering presents and quickly disposed of the incriminating evidence. After she'd gone to play, the entire family had a good laugh, and I haven't been able to live it down since. Every year they retell the story with some crazy variation, but it's all in good fun. TLDR. I accidentally led my stepdaughter to believe that Santa gave her a moldy French fry. Account 2. When I was about four, it was my great-grandmother's 100th birthday. My mom made me and my sister make her some homemade birthday cards with our pictures in them. We went to her nursing home and met her, but I refused to give her my card because I liked it so much. She died a few years later, and I have always felt really bad. Account 3. I'm 20 now. When I was about 10 years old, I brought some frogs home from the pet store. When I opened the bag, I accidentally decapitated one of the frogs. Ten years later, and I still feel horrible. I'm a vegetarian now, too. I always loved animals. But I think that incident really sealed the deal for me. Account 4. I apologize for the length of this. It's probably my most and least favorite story to share, and it took me way longer than it should have to type. So I hope you read it. My grandfather was my best friend. I had been homeschooled for a while, so at least two or three days a week I spent at his house. We used to practice how strong our handshakes could be on each other, and he would almost always win. He taught me almost everything I know. We built an entire train town together in his basement. We were so close. There was one issue. He had recurring melanoma, really fast and unexpected. In August, he was fine, his regular self. Come the next month, he was hospitalized, grasping for life. Being the stupid teenager I was, I figured it was the best course of action for me to just stop seeing him. I would let it happen without any knowledge and keep the great memories that I had of him. Fast forward to November. I had received an email and numerous calls from him, none of which I had responded to. I hadn't been to his house or even seen him in three months. He was dying quickly and I didn't want any part of it. At this point, he's in the hospital and asleep most of the time. He's lost all muscle mass, and the only hairs left on his head are the white ones. My older sister came back up to New York from Kentucky for him, so I finally gave in to go see him, and it was every bit as horrible as I imagined. Everyone around was trying to say their goodbyes, and I sat on the edge of the room trying to avoid any interaction. And for everyone else, it was a one-way conversation. He had no spare energy. My sister, his oldest grandchild, takes her turn, and he opens his eyes to see her. This is a big deal. I'm the only one left, and I don't have any other choice. I go to his side and hold his hand, and I say, Grandpa, I'm here. It's Ted. I can barely contain myself. I didn't want to be there, and I didn't want to see him like that. Slowly, but deliberately, he repeats my name in a quiet whisper and cracks the faintest smile, squeezes my hand with the tiny amount of energy he had left, and falls back into sleep. After that, nobody wanted to be there anymore, so we left, and my sister and two of my other siblings decided to use the time my sister had home to have fun, get our minds off of it, and go see Casino Royale. The movie ended at about 1 a.m., and when we got out, my sister had a voicemail. Grandpa had died during the movie. 
Since then, I haven't been able to watch that movie, and I've tried to watch the newer ones, but I just can't bring myself to. My guilt is that I'll always wonder if I had not been such an ass and gone to see him earlier. Would I have been able to spare the most important friend I could ever have months of pain and suffering? Count five. When I lived in Costa Rica, I visited this really old-school, second-generation Chinese guy for acupuncture therapy. In the States, I paid up to $125 a session, and this guy only charged me $7. Needless to say, I went to him a couple of times a week. After each session, I offered to pay him, but he always refused and told me to wait until the treatment is over. And then I moved back to the U.S. without realizing that I forgot to pay him until months later. That was back in 2007. This summer, I am going back to pay him, with interest. Account 6. I played really rough with my brother's turtle he got for his birthday, I believe, and accidentally killed it. It wasn't eating, and he'd just lay around not moving much, and so I figured if I played with him, it might get him moving. I started throwing him into a pile of blankets, and one time I missed, and the little guy started bleeding from the mouth and later died. To this day, I feel like absolute shit about it. My brother was just a little kid, and I killed his present. 7. Yes. This seems so small to people, but I guess that's what this thread is about. I was 11 or 12 on a camping trip. I was learning fishing for the first time, and we were hooking worms up to the line. Don't ask me why I did this, but I took a worm and I just dropped it into the lake. I watched it sink to the bottom, and I remember being frozen with guilt. Why did I just do that? Something so tiny, so helpless, for no reason at all. I know I was going to hook it to the line, but at least that way there was a purpose for its death. Fast forward ten years, and I'm very proactive at my local animal shelter. Thanks to a fucking worm that made me feel like shit. TLDR, dropped worm in lake, now volunteer at animal shelter. Account 8. When I was younger, eight, I think, I had a golden retriever dog that had developed cancer in his left paw. He was literally my best friend. We went everywhere together, and I used to sit and talk to him like he was my brother. He really was one of those dogs that's just part of the family. Never, ever did anything wrong, snuggled up to you when you were sad. He was perfect. We taught him lots of tricks. My favorite of his, jump. He'd rear up on his hind legs and land, smiling. One day after the cancer had set in, I told him to jump. I don't know why. I just used to love it when he did. And I hadn't seen him do it since my mom had told me he wasn't allowed to anymore. I didn't understand why. And ever faithful, he did the trick. The tumor in his paw had weakened the bone. When he landed, he broke his front leg, and the bone came out of the side. He howled and cried. Blood was everywhere. I will never forget the sight of my kitchen floor covered in blood with my family crowded around my best friend, who was whimpering quietly. We drove to the vet to have him put down. He was six. I cried as his breathing grew heavy, and he left me. Why did I make him do the trick? I know his time was coming, but it didn't have to be that day. It didn't have to be so bloody. TLDR, I shortened the life of my terminally ill dog. Account 9. 20 years ago, I was at a middle school dance having a fairly good time. A girl I sort of knew asked me if I wanted to dance, and I declined. I didn't feel like dancing. It had nothing to do with her personally. I just didn't feel like dancing at that moment. Later that night, while trying to fall asleep, it dawned on me how she must have taken it. Like I said, no thanks, because of her looks or something. It also occurred to me how much courage it took her to ask someone she hardly knew. I certainly wouldn't have had the balls to ask her to dance at that age. It still haunts me because A, I should have said yes, and B, I never had enough courage to explain my answer to her at school the following week. Sorry, Libby. Account 10. My dad and I would always go see Star Wars in the theaters when they came out, remastered Original 3. This was the only movie that my dad and I would go to together. When episode three came out, I ditched my father and went with a bunch of friends. I have felt guilt ever since that day, especially since my dad has still yet to see it. Hopefully, when Disney's versions come out, I'll have the chance to go with my dad again. Account 11. OP, you shouldn't feel bad. You made that kid's day so many times. He probably knew that you had to support yourself. He already liked you a lot. Don't think of the negative. Think of all the positive things you did towards him that impacted his life. Account 12. I found a dog. A red Welsh something. Beautiful dog. Red fur. His name was Al. 
He had a collar but no contact information. I gave him food and petted him, then sent him on his way, convincing myself he had a home to go back to and he had the way back. I found him a day later bleeding in a gutter. He'd been hit by a car and dragged there. The person had dragged him there while he was still alive. He had just enough energy to wag his tail at me before he died. I buried him, but I can't help but think it's my fault. A few days after, I found the ad for a lost dog. Red coat, responding to the name of Al. Account 13. Simply put, I feel guilty for my sister's death. She died in 1997. She was two going on three on January 1st. Two days after Thanksgiving, I was only seven, but I feel like if I had been a better big brother, it wouldn't have happened. She died of lead poisoning, which apparently lined the walls of our apartment. My mom would tell us to make her spit out the rocks. We didn't know it was lead, at least I didn't, and to go in their mouths if you have to and take them out, which we did. Except a few times when I was too busy to care. I could see her eating them in the reflection of the TV, but I just thought, it's just a rock, no harm. While yes... You could say I really didn't have much to do with her death. I feel that had I been a better big brother, she might still be here. Sadly enough, my second sister to die was only 15, passed away two weeks before the start of my sophomore year in college in 2009. I wasn't there. I was 2,000 miles away because I was afraid and felt that it was also my fault. She had a disease that there isn't really a cure for, except for a full bone marrow transplant. With the best possible match being me, out of the seven billion humans on Earth, I was her best hope. Well, the disease she had caused her many pains and she suffered a great deal, having multiple surgeries and many of her organs starting to fail before the end. She couldn't absorb calories for about three or four months before and had to have them pumped into her. One of her kidneys was full of stones and had to be removed. Likewise, so did her gallbladder. The disease would often be accompanied by random pain some days. She'd scream her back hurt and other things among that. I didn't know that her disease that I could have cured was the cause of all of these things. Only more recently did I figure some of these things out. Granted, while I was young when this was first proposed, 11 or 12, I fully understood the risks. If her body didn't take the transplant, she would be left defenseless without an immune system and would probably die within days. But I didn't give it to her, which is what happened. She would have the very short, painful life that she had, suffering and in pain. It wasn't always like that, though. She had good days and great weeks, but she would always end up back in the hospital at one point or another. I often think about the things she missed out on. I thought about them before she was even close to death. These deaths have caused me to be somewhat distant, not really wanting to show emotions because if I show any, they will be overwhelmingly sad at first. I put on a mask and hide behind it. I feel somewhat responsible and I only say somewhat because if I don't, people will try to convince me it wasn't my fault and I had nothing to do with it. Chances of successful bone marrow transplants or blah 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 doesn't really help because I'm most likely to be a match than a stranger. I live with constant guilt because of it. Despite all the good I've done, I still feel like a horrible person. I've pulled people from the street as a car was about to hit them, and I feel the same. I try to help everyone I can when possible, and it only grants me momentary relief. But again, it's not all bad. I have great days and bad. No one knows this guilt I have, and I don't really want them to know because they'll look at me differently. I guess this isn't really a small guilt. 14. Does regret count? When I was a kid... I had a crush on this girl I knew, Elizabeth, I posted the story about four months ago. I only saw her for one week every year, which compounded itself and made it even more unbearable. I was thinking about her all the time, still do. When I was 13, I had a few opportunities to tell her how I felt, but I could never build the courage. I never saw her after that week, lost contact with her, and now I regret missing that opportunity. I feel guilty whenever I think of her, that somehow still longing after her four years later is wrong. I had my chance and I missed it, and I don't think the guilt will go away until I actually get to talk to her again. Account 15. I was visiting Chicago for a weekend with a friend and decided to have a late lunch at a Mexican restaurant before our flight back to Texas. We had such a great time with good food and half a dozen margaritas each. After dinner, he got up and headed to the counter to pay. When he came back, I went to the restroom and returned to the table and asked if he was ready to go. As we left, the waitress and counter staff all smiled and waved us goodbye. 
We took the train to the airport and eventually settled into our airplane seats. Midway through the flight, I turned to him and thanked him for buying dinner. He didn't. He had only gone to the counter to ask for a toothpick. He equally assumed I paid when he was away. I could have called and offered a credit card over the phone, but we didn't. It still bothers me now. Account 16. When I was 12 years old, I had a friend named Mike and another friend named Chris. Over the summer, I would hang out and ride bikes with Chris, and being 12 years old, I told him he was my best friend. One day, I was hanging out with Mike in his tree fort when Chris came down the street on his bike. Mike didn't really like Chris that much and told me to duck, so I did. I was more of a follower instead of a leader at the time. He then started to make fun of Chris, and Chris must have overheard, so he rode home. The fact of the matter was I didn't stand up for Chris. The next day, Chris invited me over, so I walked into his house and went up to his room as usual. When I walked in, he had a gun in his hand. He told me that it was because of me. He put the gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger. It was an extreme reaction that changed my life forever. I only remember the screams from his mom, the lights from the cop cars. I went home, and I never wanted to be friends with anyone ever again. If you were to meet me today, you would never know because I am one of the most outgoing people you could ever meet. I turn everyone into a best friend and I will stand up for anyone, individually, fully, and wholeheartedly. But there isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about it and feel guilty for what happened. It will haunt my dreams now and forever. Account 17. A recent small guilt for me. I visited the outlet mall in Palm Springs recently, and I met this pretty girl with a sweet face in one of the men's shoe aisles. She was checking out shoes, but then saw me checking out a pair to the left of her, and she asked me what section she was in, looking kind of embarrassed. I told her that this was a men's shoe aisle, but nobody could really tell what gender the shoes you're wearing are. I said something else about how sizes are just conversions, add two to men's size to find women's, but it would be hard to find her men's size since her feet weren't exactly that big. She thanked me, smiled, hung around for a couple more minutes, then went on her way somewhere else in the store. I could tell from the body language and the smile that we really clicked. She seemed really nice, but I was so busy looking for my new kicks that I didn't even get her name. Later, I saw her across the store a couple of times, also trying on shoes, and she glanced at me a couple of times, but I didn't talk to her. Now I'm sitting here on the toilet regretting that I never got her name or number and the fact that I'll probably never see this beautiful girl again. T.L.D.R. I was so preoccupied with trying on shoes that I didn't get the name of my potential soulmate. Account 18. Backstory. I was a fickle person when I was younger. Anyway, when I was 17 or so, I downloaded a chat app for my iPod and met a girl. She was depressed, but a nice person. Whenever I went on, we would chat it up, troll the trolls, etc. One day I went on and I was in silent mode so nobody could see if I was on. The trolls were harassing her and she PM'd me, asking if I was there, she needed to talk. I felt like doing other things, so I went on my way. The next day I went on and I had loads of messages from her. They started off like, hey, are you there? I need to talk to somebody. Things had gone south for her at home and she was going to kill herself. She sent me all these messages looking desperately for a lifeline, and I was too self-absorbed to take the time to talk to her. I combed the chats looking for her, but still haven't found her. Part of me thinks she killed herself, and I hate myself for it. The rest of me hopes that she's alive and on Reddit, then I can apologize.